the 1,500 feet which remained to be accomplished took us at least five hours. The turnings and windings, the no thoroughfares, the marches and marches turned that insignificant distance into at least three leagues. I never felt such misery, fatigue, and exhaustion in my life. I was ready to faint from hunger and cold. The rarefied air at the same time painfully acted upon my lungs. It seldom happened to me to sleep so well as I did on that particular night. I didn't even dream. Next day, when we awoke under the rays of a bright and glorious sun, we were nearly frozen by the keen air. I left my granite couch and made one of the party to enjoy a view of the magnificent spectacle which developed itself, panorama-like, at our feet. It was by no means too great a flight of fancy to believe that a giant picture was stretched out before me. I could see the deep valleys that crossed each other in every direction. I could see precipices looking like sides of wells, lakes that seemed to be changed into ponds that looked like puddles, and rivers that were transformed into petty brooks. To my right were glaciers upon glaciers and multiplied peaks topped with light clouds of smoke. The undulation of these infinite numbers of mountains whose snowy summits make them look as if covered by foam recalled to my remembrance the surface of a storm-beaten ocean. I soon felt that strange and mysterious sensation which is awakened in the mind when looking down from lofty hilltops. And now I was able to do so without my feeling of nervousness, having fortunately hardened myself to that kind of sublime contemplation.